Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live here at the Dell Storage Forum. This is day two of Dell Storage Forum. We're in Boston, and we're joined by Terry McClure, who's a senior analyst with the Enterprise Strategy Group. Terry, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's great to have you. We love to bring the independent perspective, you know, because we bring in all the executives and we get the, the messaging. Mm -hmm. It's laid on thick at these conferences, which is very good, you know. It used to be, at, you know, years ago, you know, you go to these conferences, it was sort of grassroots. It was, it was kind of hack, not anymore. I mean, we're talking about big time productions. We got mm -hmm. bands, we got dancers. We got acrobats. Acrobats, amazing <laughs> visuals, right? It's really, Quite a change in our industry, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and you you've been there for a while, so uh, you've you've seen that sort of the, sort of that growth, and I think it's a good thing, though. I think this this industry is growing up in a good way. And storage isn't boring anymore. Storage has really become a core and strategic piece of the infrastructure. Remember, in the olden days, storage was a peripheral peripheral they had to have. Storage. Storage. <laughs> That's yes. what my wife calls it, yes. still to this day. But you know, I, you know, I can understand. But us, we love it, right? We never found it boring. But, um, so, at ESG, you've been there for a number of years now. You're the lead analyst on um, file-based storage, mm -hmm. NAS. I presume you cover a lot of object? Yes, I do. I saw you at NAB. It was a mm -hmm. really good show, I thought. Um, NAB was uh, an interesting show in that the prevalence of object storage, I mean, it just makes so much sense for object storage to be the, the storage medium of choice for really, really large object stores with the flat file system that makes it so much more manageable and, and searchable. So what's sense. happening in NAS these days? I mean, it's, we've, we've seen NAS evolve. I mean, NetApp got it all started, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. I guess not really, I guess Auspex. Auspex, and, you know, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> Showing our age. And NetApp showed them <laughs> how it should be done. You know, and then EMC sort of came in and the mm -hmm. EMC's way with, with Celera and, and, and uh, of course ended up buying Isilon just mm -hmm. to extend that. Um, but so what's happening with NAS? It seems to have lost a little bit of its shine, but it's still a really critical component of the infrastructure, isn't it? I mean, that's an interesting question. When NAS hasn't really lost its shine. I mean, we've still got to deal with this massive amount of unstructured data growth. And unstructured data is still the biggest growth component of all the storage out there, right? Um, we've seen a real transition over these past few years in the NAS market to scale out storage architectures and we've seen that certainly reflected in the Dell announcements this week with the new fluid file system that they've announced. Um, so we've just, so NASA's just undergone a massive transition in the architecture to make it something that's more scalable and manageable. It used to be pretty painful to manage a lot of itty bitty small file systems and a lot of itty bitty small servers scattered about the enterprise. So, so we needed this transition in order to get these massively scalable solutions out there um, so that you can get, you know, terabytes and petabytes and even some systems go up to exabytes of data under management. Yeah, so when, when Dell bought Exanet, I didn't really know much about Exanet. Yep. You probably followed them pretty closely yep. at the time. But they weren't really a well-known company, right? They weren't a yeah. household name. Right? No, they were still pretty early in their evolution. In fact, um, but ESG Lab had tested the Exanet product. Uh -huh. um, and at that point in time, when you think about you know, a couple of years ago even, th these scale-out NAS systems were, they were the, the, almost the lunatic fringe. They were used where they had to be used in highly um, throughput intensive environments that had really big files and really needed to scale. And these guys put them in place because uh, they had to, because they couldn't survive unless they had these really scalable systems. Um, the challenge is it's really hard to make those types of really scalable systems easy to use and do the techie things that you need to do, the cache consistency across a multi-node cluster to keep all your data clean, right? Um, snapshots against multiple nodes. It's really hard to make all that uh, functional and easy to use. Uh, but Exanet was one of those generations of storage systems that was coming in to really accomplish just that, make it enterprise ready. And we had tested it and uh, Brian Garrett, who runs ESG Labs, was really impressed with the potential that Exanet had to be a highly scalable enterprise class scale out storage system and start bringing kind of that lunatic fringe scale out scalable capacity into the data center. People talk a lot about a global namespace. That yep. comes a, a, up a lot in the, the NAS business. Um, it sounds good. I, I'd like a global namespace. So what, <laughs> what actually is meant by that? And, and, and what's, you know, there's a lot of marketing behind that. Oh yeah, we have a global namespace. But you hear different stories about, you know, those who do have it, those who say they have it and don't. What, what is it? Why does it matter? And, and who really does have it? Um, that's a good question. And different people, I mean, global namespace, it's, 
gosh, it's almost as meaningless as cloud nowadays. You know, yeah. cloud can mean six different things. So many people mean different things now when they talk about global namespaces, but it's essentially one mount point for a file system that you can, that, that enables you um, to, to create one really large namespace that can span multiple nodes, so multiple it storage nodes. Things, so right. it simplifies things. It, it, instead of having a se separate mount point for every storage NAS, NAS storage node you have, you've got one mount point that kind of maps to everything, right? So you get a highly scalable system. Some systems uh, ha have kind of more of a namespace aggregation, which virtualizes a bunch of smaller namespaces into one global namespace, and that's what they mean by a global namespace. Others have a, you know, a true global namespace, they'd say, that virtualizes the hardware. So there's different ways of implementing it. But the important thing is, it's, it's, it's the fewer things IT has to manage, the easier it is to manage them. And that's what the global namespace does for you. It gives you one mount point, one, one, one management um, point of control. So. You hear a lot about object storage. We've been hearing a lot about object storage sure. for a while now, and it finally seems to be at least getting some traction mm -hmm. in certain segments. You know, cloud archiving, for example. Mm -hmm. You're seeing some service providers like Nirvanix, you mm -hmm. know, claiming anyway they're doing some significant business, um, and and they also claim that they're going after a lot of the traditional NAS space. Is that how you see it? Um, is that again more vendor marketing? Help us squint through that. Gosh, uh, another good question, David, and. Um, you know, object storage, because of because it, you can have really rich metadata around it. Um, it's it's, uh, and it's a flat namespace. You're not stuck with a hierarchical file system where you try to figure out which directory and file folder structure that you put all your data in. So uh, it's so that 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 metadata point you're making. So the metadata inside the, the embedded the in the object, together, encapsulated in the object, right. which is important because it's not trapped in an application or a file system. And it right, makes so it searchable and manageable, and you can you can you can manipulate the object, and you can put some context around it to, to be able to do further operations with it. So that's attractive. That's attract. That's certainly attractive. And the scalability of having a flat namespace instead of having to navigate through folders to find things, if you can just search it based on the, the richer metadata or whatever, it makes it. I mean, there's so this manageability aspects of it that make object storage suitable for really, really large. We start, I mean, we're talking, all of a sudden we're talking about petabytes and exabytes of data. I had an exabyte scale discussion with a vendor the other day. They have literally can scale their systems into the exabyte range. Um, and how do you manage that if you've got a hierarchical file system that you're browsing through folders? It gets really tough. So right. the web guys are all, are all over so this. So the web guys are all right. over this, the media and entertainment guys, um, are all over this, and, and we saw that at NAB. Uh, there was a, yeah. a, a lot of space about this, but now that we're getting more and more, you know, on long-term online archives, um, sure, it, it's a natural fit for that. So, um, so let's talk about Dell a little bit. This is okay. were you at Dell Storage Forum last year? Yes. Yeah. So this is second year, and now you may have been mm -hmm. at earlier ones as well. But I, I know, like the no, nope, this was no, last year's the, my first. The, it was compellent. The, the C drive was sort of block-based, and that's yep. not your wheelhouse, but. Uh, I'm impressed with the progress that they've made. I mean, last year was sort of like a trial balloon, and, mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought that was good. Michael Dell was there to give it a little, little charge, but these guys are doing it on their own now mm -hmm. without the, the big guy. And I think it's, it, to me, it feels real. I mean, Dell, uh, Dell is relevant in storage. Do, what, what do you think about them, and what do you think about this event? Um, Dell, Dell is relevant in storage. They've definitely, when you start digging under the covers and you look at the whole portfolio, they've got quite a compelling storage portfolio. Mm. They've beefed up the NAS portfolio this week with the fluid file system announcements. They've got from Power Vault all the way up into the Compellent line now, or the Equalogic line. They've, so they've got quite a NAS portfolio. Um, the Block portfolio that they've had um, with the Equalogic and the Compellent. So, so I, I'd say they're a serious storage player. One of the um, and they, they certainly take it seriously. I think one of the challenges is that you know when you come to an event like this, you hear a lot about what Dell does, but they haven't done a great job of, of painting kind of the vision about why, right? Um, you know, what's the end goal? How do they see IT look? What's the vision five, six years down the road that they're delivering towards? They've got it. They've got it in the bowels of the company. They're doing some really cool stuff when you look at the Project Hermes, mm. uh, is it Project... Uh, is it Hermes, Hermes, I think? Yeah. yeah, with some of the technology that they acquired a year and a half or so with ago from RNA Network. And and presumably really, Flash, yeah. Yeah, there's some really interesting stuff under the covers there, and they've got some really great vision. But the, the challenge they have here is they're a serious storage player. They've got a great storage portfolio. They haven't done a great job of telling kind of the big picture story about what the end game is that they're marching towards. So, But they're doing a great job of telling us what they have and what problems they're solving today. 
It's unbelievable. I mean, you walk around their Solutions Expo, and it's small, yep. um, but you get a sense that, I mean, that Dallas got like one of everything. I mean, there's not, yes. not a lot that they don't do, right? They got Block, they got several flavors of Block, they got iSCSI, they got Fiber mm -hmm. Channel, they got, they got a NAS play, they got object storage, they got this App Assure thing, which yep. is you know really kind of interesting. And, um, then, and then the Blade Array. Yeah, the Blade the Array they rolled out this week. Right. I mean, the whole Equalogic. The that, that's a really interesting piece. And, and when you look at what Dell has, uh, not just from the storage standpoint, but, but all the, the um, engineering that went into that from the server and the, even the uh, laptop division, to shrink down that controller and make it fit into a blade system, it really showed the power of owning the whole portfolio end to end. I mean, there's some pretty impressive engineering work that went into that. It's a, it's, it is impressive, and, and Dell made a lot of acquisitions, but good ones. They've yeah. done a really good job. I mean, yep. I'm trying to think of any duds that they've had. I mean, you can, uh, I can't, but you know, I'm not that familiar hmm. with the the, the 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 lineup. But I mean, they seem to be leveraging, you know, everything. Ocarina. X and Net, obviously Compel and Equalogic were sort of mm -hmm. you know, out of the box successful. Mm -hmm. um, Appasure looks like it has a lot of promise. The mm -hmm. RNA I don't know much about. I mean, that's sort of a, a, the new kid on the block. Yeah. But, uh, but that, and that's the basis, I guess, of, of Hermes. So this seems to have a lot of potential. Whereas a lot of storage companies <laughs> you know, struggle with acquisitions. Why do you think Dell is so competent at acquisitions? Well, first of all, do you agree that they're competent and why? Yeah, and I hadn't thought about that a lot, so that's a, a, a good point. And a lot of companies kind of, they make the acquisition and you know, you might go to their storage conference or go to their analyst events and, and it kind of disappears and you wonder what's been going on under the covers, but yet here we are talking about what they've done with Ecologic and Apisure and RNA, and RNA's taken a, 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 a big center stage role this year. And I think it kind of goes towards Dell's core competencies in operations. When you think about Dell, you think about operational excellence. Mm -hmm. And um, in a company that's got that level of operational excellence, I, I just think that you know they, they've got this clear vision of how things fit together that allows them to leverage them instead of kind of you know buy it and tuck it away and and have it come out later. Yeah, or just leave it alone yeah. and let it grow and don't integrate it in yeah. any way and let the customers figure out the integration path. You know, which yeah. happens, right? And we've seen it. It actually works. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've seen companies. I mean, look at EMC. They basically, you know, bought Legato and took a long time to figure mm -hmm. out, you know, what to do with that. They're just, I think, finally now getting around to it. Um, I think mm -hmm. EMC's doing a better job, but but historically, they've kind of left a lot of their applications uh, uh, acquisitions alone. Not necessarily the technology acquisitions, but I mean, they've not all worked out. And EMC's really good at acquisitions. You know. Took me so long time to get there. Well, you remember some of the earlier EMC acquisitions. I don't know if you remember Epic. Yes. You remember Epic? So yes. that wasn't good. Yes. You know, that was the <laughs> early days. And then, um, you know, the Documentum, Legato, they struggle a lot with some of those early acquisitions. Even RSA has, has been some of the struggle. Mm -hmm. Then they hit like a super grand slam home run, the greatest acquisition in the history of the computer industry <laughs> with VMware. But and then subsequent to that, but they no, seemed to get really But nobody knew why. Well. And at the time, right. nobody knew why. I remember they were trying to integrate it, and then they're like, that didn't work, and there was all this stuff going on with Diane Green, and, and then, but after they sorted that out, it's almost like Tucci mm -hmm. brought in, okay, we screwed up a lot of you know, acquisitions, mm -hmm. now we know what we did wrong, and mm -hmm. now we're going for it. NetApp is another one that struggled with a lot of the mm -hmm. acquisitions that, yeah. it's, that it's made, and I'm, I'm actually predicting that NetApp will, will figure that out. I think it has to. You know, I think it's so. doing a much better job with the LSI acquisition. Yeah, for sure, and, and Genio, right? Yep. Yeah, we're yep. going to hear more about, you going to be out there next week? Yes. Or? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. They always do a really good job with the Endless event. They, they do. They spend a lot of time with the Endless. They really put a high priority on it. So, of course, we love that. You know, IBM's another one. They've been pretty acquisitive. Um, done, I guess, I guess, guess done pretty well. I mean, you know, XIV's worked out for them. Um, the NAS space, what's going on with IBM and NAS? Is SONAS, is, um, uh, it SONAS seems to be you know, struggling to get your huge traction. You know? It had some bumps. Yeah. Um, you know, we Conceptually, really interesting, right? Conceptually, it's great. I yeah. mean, but we had some, you know, we, we, we talked earlier about how hard it is to take these clustered file systems and make them easy to use and make them functional across these multi-node systems and just make them simple to manage. I mean, SONAS is based on GPFS, a really powerful file system that, that has right. a ton of functionality. So packaging that up and harnessing it and make it easy to use and make it reliable. And I mean, it, 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 it's, it's quite an engineering challenge to even accomplish that. And it, it had, it certainly had some bumps. They seem to have figured figured it out now. They needed to figure out the, the right target markets and how to how to 
um, position that versus the N series that they sell. Um, but I think they've 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 straightened out a lot of the the road bumps uh, that that they the speed bumps that they okay. They so get they've the road. got their own IP. For, they've got their for their own NASPA. IP. And HP's yep. got Ibrix, yep. which is sort of their version of Exanet, right? And they're yes. bringing that. They, that's the their X. version of fluid data architecture. They're bringing that to all their various yep. plays, including three par, right? I mean, so. Right, I believe. I don't know. They've given a statement of direction, but I don't They've know. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. But They've hinted um, that way anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's kind of a logical play, right? Mm -hmm. that you do that. So, um, so that's so it looks like the big guys: IBM, HP, Dell, EMC, by buying Iceland. They all get their NAS yeah. store together. So where does that leave some of the NAS startups? Like, an, I, I I was script their name: Avir, Aviri. Avir, Avir, sure. Yeah, so they've got some interesting stuff going on. They're doing some cool stuff with tiering and mm -hmm. optimizing for different media types. Um, are, 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 is that a, is still a good startup market? Are they be able to innovate and you know be a good acquisition candidate, or is everybody's NAS pretty much solid? Um, for the big guys, you know, the high-end NAS is pretty solid. There's still a lot of opportunity kind of on the low end, kind of below the radar of these guys, and that's where you see the people like Scale Computing and Grid Store and some other, there's some others coming into the market now. So there's still a lot of room in that, that probably the SMB space. Um, but, but most of them, and that's where you see EMC with the VNXE targeting, right? Um, most of them have the higher-end higher NAS pretty well locked. Uh, Avir's an interesting play, though. Avir's, Avir's a, uh, a chameleon of sorts because you can take it and you can in the global namespace discussion we had you can put it in front of a scale up system and multiple scale up systems and have a global namespace and virtualize the NAS storage infrastructure and kind of speed everything up with the automated tiering but you can also take edge nodes with them and they've got a very interesting edge node use case where you can centralize all your NAS storage at the home data at, at the home um, data center and put a node on the edge which will cache all of your edge operations yet have the primary storage back at the core. Um, they've made some interesting uh, technology investments and had a, had a product release maybe a month or two ago that significantly sped up the performance of those edge nodes, increasing the use case, whereas before it just used to be um, not very write intensive workloads. They, they got about a 50 to one reduction in latency for those edge operations that had to go back to the data center, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, right. With the new release, they're claiming 500 to one. So now you start looking at the use cases like maybe virtual desktop support at the at the robo remote office. Um, uh, back office, yeah. Back, yeah. So some interesting interesting use cases on on, on the edge for Avir that they can address. Serious geeks too out of uh, Carnegie Mellon, right? I mean, it's very really really smart people. Very very smart uh, enthusiastic group over there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the Pittsburgh startup scene, right? <laughs> yeah. Good. And and so um, let's see. So what's happening at ESG these days? You got you got any research you can talk about that's new and. Um, we're, g we're digging into an, a number of areas. Um, we've done some interesting research on uh, the big data. You can't walk around, walk around a corner without hearing about big data nowadays. And uh, we just finished surveying a bunch of uh, uh, IT folks on their big data plans. And we wanted to understand the analytics environments, not just, I mean, we didn't, weren't just looking at the Hadoop side of big data. We wanted to understand analytics in general and what users were facing and what the tipping points were regarding their largest data sets and their fastest growing data sets, as well as find out just where Hadoop is. And um, so we found some really interesting things regarding um, you know, how mission critical the analytics is becoming in data centers. You know, whereas before people were doing their batch updates, you know, once every once a day or once every couple of hours. Now that we're, we're so many more people are looking at doing real time updates. About a third of the people we talk to are doing real time updates. When you talk about how that translates into the storage infrastructure, what used to be kind of a commodity based DAS storage infrastructure may not stand up to the levels of availability you're looking for when you're doing real time analytics operations. You need to start worrying about uh, a little bit more about availability, right, and the cost of downtime if you can't do your real-time analytics. So we're s seeing users willing to pay a little bit more for their storage infrastructure now instead of putting all that analytics stuff just on DAS, start looking at high availability external network attached storage systems to support that. That's, a, that's, an, that's an interesting shift in analytics. Yeah, so the big data thing has obviously exploded. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, we're, this week, uh, not, not me unfortunately, but we're, uh, uh, out at the uh, Hadoop Summit. My yep. colleague John Furrier's okay. out there with a bunch of folks doing uh, the Cube out there. A lot of interesting things going on. The number of companies are taking you know, their NAS product, for example, and 
maybe doing a deal with Cloudera or mm -hmm. doing some kind of connector into, into Hadoop. Is, is, is your sense that that's the right play, that's the right storage for HDFS, or is it still too early to say? Is it, is, I mean, today has a lot of white box stuff, right? A lot of Seagate. <laughs> well, know? and which, which makes sense. When you look at the business units that have been playing with Hadoop right now, it's not the data center that's been playing Hadoop, it's more the business units, and they're just putting it on, you know, a, a, a group of servers with internal storage is a prevalent use case right now in, right. in Hadoop environments. Um, as those applications are getting brought into the data center, you know, IT's looking at it and saying, wait a minute, we don't use internal storage, we, we network our storage, we've got high availability, we've got this data protection processes in place, um, DR processes in place that we have to map to. Um, so as you start seeing the Hadoop stuff move from, from, from the business un units into the data center, we see an uptick in the intentions to put it on sand storage and, 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 uh, pay, and even cloud, an uptick in cloud. Um, but, but the approach is interesting, and I don't want to, when you start looking at, at Hadoop and some of the things it does and the way it operates, breaking up you know, the, the big operation with a bunch of subtasks mm -hmm. and farming the op compute operation out to where yeah. the storage lives, right. Um, if you network the storage and you have a storage pool that you're sharing, by nature you can't put the compute operations where the storage lives because the storage is striped across a whole bunch of nodes. So um, what's the right approach? Some vendors say they can mitigate the latency associated with you know, not running the compute at where the storage uh, uh, data lives. Um, and they say that y you don't really notice that their storage is fast enough. Maybe they're using FinnaBand backends, but I think um, I think we'll, we'll have to wait and see what the trade-offs are regarding that that locality of reference benefit you get with the Hadoop architecture versus the ability to um, have your high availability shared network storage. I mean, there's there's, there's trade-offs to be made uh, for both use cases. Yeah, and Hadoop is you know inherently batch, as you know, and yep. everybody's trying to push to real time. You've seen some interesting developments yep. and, and guys like Adapt. Yep. that are really trying to, to, to uh, reach around the connector strategy and mm -hmm. do stuff sort of in an integrated fashion. I know Vertica has made some statements in that direction, so it's very exciting space. You it's, know, it's we, we love you know, new trends like this, right? We're analysts, so mm -hmm. you know, we take that stuff. Now you guys also, ESG, had a big presence at EMC World. You were at mm -hmm. EMC, I said a booth, um, reaching out to sort of, I don't know, I guess practitioners. Mm -hmm. Steve gave a big, Steve Duplessis, the founder of yep. ESG, gave a big, Keynote, Steve and his dancing girls. That was, he's a character. So that's so you guys, um, you guys have ha had the labs. You got a zillion analysts. <laughs> you guys have really, you know, we've the, grown a lot. The storage, you know, I, I don't even call you a boutique anymore. I mean, you guys are, you know, a, a large, you know, mid-sized research company, but you know, really best in class in, in storage, Thank you. no doubt. And. Um, Seems like you know you guys are growing great, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And uh, love to see the uh, the outreach to the practitioner community. And, and uh, y you know we're getting some interesting traction with the practitioner community because of some of the other research that we've we've recently started doing. We're, we're looking, we're taking a good hard look at the online file sharing collaboration space. Because, mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess to sum it up, uh, enterprise Dropbox yeah. is is causing some big challenges in IT today, uh, primarily because you know. And endpoint device sprawl, right? I, I myself, I, this is, I'm, I'm a geek. Um, I've got seven endpoint devices that I use. It's a little sad. <laughs> it's okay, you can, you can tell me it's sad. Um, I bet you, I, no, maybe not that many, but, but getting close. You know, you know? iPads, laptop, I've got a desktop, yeah. I've got a smartphone, I've got an Android um, tablet. Um, and the big challenge is sharing data between all my endpoint devices. I want access to one set of data from all these devices, right? Right. So, Dropbox. If you're familiar with Dropbox? Yeah, sure. I mean, simple solution. I was going to ask you what you thought of the Simplicity announcement that well, and, MC made. And I think Simplicity is a fascinating announcement because the challenge here is if I'm using if I'm using Dropbox and I go out and get my account to solve that problem for solving uh, sharing one set of files across multiple devices, I own that Dropbox account. And if I leave EMS, uh, yeah. Is a Freudian slip. If I well, leave ESG, there, right? I know I was at EMC <laughs> a long time. Yeah. If I leave ESG, and I have subscribed to Dropbox, that that Dropbox account it comes with me. It's mine. Yeah, nobody's the, uh, the data comes with me. Nobody knows what's nobody's in there. Nobody's erasing your nobody's endpoint erasing my Dropbox devices. Account. Yeah, right. and and that's what's interesting. <laughs> or they about can erase your endpoint devices, but it's your data. It's it's uh, my data. It lives yeah. on my home computer, yeah, right? right? Because it's my account. 
So that's what was interesting about the Simplicity acquisition. Simplicity looks at at, at, at giving you know an IT dashboard and control and management of those shares, and that's what that's what a lot of IT practitioners are struggling with today. Dropbox is coming into the enterprise. People are using it without permission. Um, there's a big article last week about IBM outlawing it completely from right. the enterprise, along with Siri, which was interesting. Um, but it's happening. Well, that's because Siri sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't have Siri. Although the commercials are a little spooky. Um, but uh, it's good if you're really lonely and you want to need somebody the to commercials talk to. Otherwise, tell it's me. useless. I can <laughs> attest to that. Um, hopefully, it's going to get better. But okay, but so that's the play. So, it's so, really so the the play is to give. So, so, so IT is looking at. Um, what do I do about Dropbox? Is there an enterprise class solution? And that's what Simplicity gave EMC. Um, something that they can deploy across the enterprise that, that allows users to share one set of the truth across all their endpoint devices, but gives IT the administration, security, and control that they need to continue to protect corporate assets. And that's a, f that's a fascinating market. We're, we're having end user discussions, and part of our end user um, practice is centered around yep. uh, having these discussions about, about decision making. We've got research coming out in this space looking at all of the uh, all of all of the business class offerings in this space, um, and uh, we're just we're just getting a, a, a ton of traction in, in in digging into these solutions. And you called it you know, collaboration. You referred yeah. to it before. It's, it's, I mean, it's storage, but it's really a different use case for storage, and it's just collaboration related. And it's 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 maybe disruptive, maybe not. I don't know. Now well, Dell doesn't have one, right? Dell doesn't have a Dropbox Del for the enterprise, and I'm not sure they should. They don't well, have a Mosey. <laughs> You well, know. Dell partners, Dell, you know, yeah, if, they, right. if you look at some of the partnerships, the DX group partners with the Satera actually has a Dropbox-like yeah, functionality right, okay. as well as a gateway, yeah, and right. there's, there's a couple other people that they partner with to offer this type of functionality. Yeah, I mean, I'm not convinced you have to own that just yet. I mean, um, it's an interesting move by EMC, but they put it into the, the IIG old documentum group. group. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. it's not really a pure storage play, it's more of a collaboration play, as you were saying. Um, but what's interesting is when you start, when I talk to end users about what they're doing, when, when, when they're deploying Box or Dropbox or Simplicity, or not Dropbox so much because it, it doesn't have the administration and security and control you need, but when they're deploying Box or Simplicity or Ignite, and I say, what are you, are you augmenting and creating new functionality in the enterprise or are you replacing? Um, they're, there's, there's two things that they're replacing. They're replacing, they tell me they're, they're, they're Linux and Windows file servers and their EMC and NetApp NAS storage. They're replacing their file storage with these online file sharing collaboration platforms. And they're replacing so, some of their uh, SharePoint, right? Right. Because the two use cases for these platforms are the single version of the truth that I can share across all my endpoint devices to enable me as a remote or mobile worker and easy collaboration and sharing of files and workflow. Mm. So it is, is disruptive in that sense. It's it's going to be interesting. I mean, we're yeah. going to be digging into the potential share shift from NAS into these OFS, OFS is our internal term, sorry, but online file sharing collaboration yeah. solutions. We're going to be digging a little bit into that share shift. Interesting topic, so, uh, yeah. so look for that research. Uh, Terry McClure, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, uh, ESG Analyst TMAC. ESG Analyst. T -Mac, T Mac at ESG analyst T Mac. Follow Terry McClure, very knowledgeable. Now we couldn't be here without the you know great support of Dell, of course, mm -hmm. inviting us in, and also Legal Seafood. You, you like Legal Seafood? I love Legal Seafood. So Legal Seafood, you know, Father's Day is coming up. For all you out there, Father's Day, I happen to love it. <laughs> Shoplegalseafood.com. Check it out. Shop.legalseafood.com. You know they got. They ship all over the United States, so so check them out. And they've given us, they've been great with some gift certificates, so I'd like to give you this gift certificate to legal, so thank go you. enjoy, and thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it, it was great to see you. Thank you, it was great to see you, I appreciate it. All right, keep it right there, we'll be right back after this word. <laughs>